that undisputed, I'd say that she wants that rematch more than Persoon. But she is in saying that, do you think that rematch is going to happen? I don't. No. I, and I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. And I'll tell you why. I've seen a little bit of social commentary about Katie's a good and virtuous person and Katie will want to do the right thing. That is absolutely true. And that is the Katie that we all know. But Brian Peters and Eddie Hearn are businessmen and they're going to realise that this is a cash cow they have right now. She is the undisputed champion of the world. She is the greatest boxer on the planet. Play by play on Sports Joe and Her. Brought to you by AIG. In support of 20 by 20. We have a lot to talk about this week. Katie Taylor's controversial fight over the weekend. We're going to be also speaking about the upcoming FIFA Women's World Cup that's kicking off this Friday, as well as Serena Williams' early exit in the French Open. Um, I'm Jenny Murphy. This is Play by Play, brought to you by AIG. I want to introduce you to our two guests. Firstly, I would like to say Mackers isn't here because she's off on her annual nudist beach colony thing, so she gets an all over tan. I heard that she said last week that I was in the hairdressers for seven days. So I hope she's listening. Enjoy, Mackers. Um, first of all, I actually probably better introduce you. Jackie Hurley, Hurley can't believe I balls that up. Jackie Hurley, RT <laughs> presenter, Irish basketball player, Cork Camogie player, pretty impressive stuff. Lydia De Dolls, um, you, so you're Fight Connect TV, Presenter, you started the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, MMA expert, yeah. Jiu Jitsu blue belt, yes. four grades. Yeah. Okay, I, f I feel like I've done a pretty good job <laughs> That's there. Well done, Jenny. Yeah. That's brilliant. But give me some more. Give me some more details. Yeah. Yeah. So I started um, Fight Connect TV about three and a half years ago. Um, so it's basically uh, a platform that features amateur and professional uh, combat sports. Uh, athletes predominantly out of Ireland, but um, moving now into the UK and further afield. But, but how we started was uh, Irish athletes, yeah. And did you just this is this is a gap in the market? Yeah, like I, I, as I was saying before we started filming, I um, was in music for like eight nine years and left and kind of was at a loss of what to do. Never done sports, just thought I was a creative person and sport wasn't my thing. And out of the blue, started jiu jitsu and just fell in love with it and just spent a year and a half just training, competing and just changing my mindset. And then through that, you know, I obviously um, was going to MMA shows, boxing, and I was like, God, there's this whole underbelly of sports going on that I had no idea about. Um, so I just started, you know, Snapchat or little videos here and there and they just took off. And then, yeah, four years later, here we are. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to be our expert when we talk about the Katie Taylor. Person. Well, I'll give, 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 give an opinion. Yeah, give yeah, yeah, insights. yeah, yeah. But it's it's good. I'm delighted. It's a, it's a good uh, it's a good show to be on because obviously we had the weekend, you know. So it was brilliant. Not too bad. I'll have to check more of that out. Yeah. And Jackie, I, I know I've covered an awful lot with that, but your list of stuff on Wikipedia is very impressive. <laughs> as is Jackie's web feet. Terrible yes. swimmer apparently. <laughs> yeah. But like the list of accolades. It's, it's fairly extensive The stuff. web feed is fairly up there. Yeah, listen, I mean, I suppose anybody who... I think a lot of women in Ireland are just generally... They, they like a lot of sport. I find a lot of people, like you, obviously, football, rugby, you know, anything that's going. I think a lot of women that I know that I would have even went to college with and all, they don't just play one sport. They play two or three, and a lot of them excel at two or three, you know, so... Um, I guess, listen, I was like any other kid in, in Ireland who just was thrown into loads of different sports and thankfully some of them ended up going pretty well. And it was, was it because you were so interested in the sport that you kind of went off to the States and really focused on that area, sports yeah. broadcasting? And then yeah, back? to be honest, I probably, when I was younger, I don't know if there was the, the platforms that there are now. Like, I don't think it was ever a realistic hope for me to go and be a professional athlete. Like, you know, I don't think it was ever... Like, there was scholarship offers and stuff like that when I was in, in secondary school, and it, it just didn't really feel like the right fit for me. I kind of wanted to do broadcast journalism, and, and I just didn't really feel like delaying that anymore. I was kind of just ready for it, so I just kind of wanted to keep doing the sport but not really take it any further. I think if I was probably going back now, I think I'd look at it differently because I think when you see now what a lot of the, the women have as an option in terms of professional sport, it's amazing. But like, look, for me, life was kind of different. I went and did the path, went to America, did the internship and never looked back genuinely since. Like sport has always been a huge passion in our house. My mom and dad love watching sport. They dragged us out the door to everything. We grew up in Australia for seven years and just followed everything out there, lived down the road from the Institute of Sport. And you know, Australia, they're just throw everything at sport. So 
um, yeah, listen, we probably didn't have any other choice in our house but to get on to get on board with it. So would you have ever thought about like so you've played a lot of sports? Would a boxing been? No, okay. absolutely not. And I've been asked loads of times to do white collar <laughs> boxing. Getting hit in the face is just not for me, and I'd be terrible at it. I really would. I've never been fast. I've never had fast feet, and I wouldn't really consider myself fast hands. Like if I even came anywhere near you, you'd absolutely <laughs> bust me now. I'd, I, w I'd be, I wouldn't stand a chance. I'd be terrible at it. I'd, I'd say now I wouldn't even give it a go. I'd be terrible. Yeah, like I'd be surprised. I always say give it a shot because you don't know. You know, but even jiu-jitsu. No, jiu -jitsu or not a hope. I actually, I remember a few years ago, I was filming a documentary, right? And um, Owen Cadigan was doing it with me. And he had started doing jiu-jitsu with um, Kieran McGinney, the Armagh manager, and they were training with Conor McGregor. So I went up to the gym to watch them because I was like, oh, we might film a bit of this, throw it into the documentary. I actually was watching it so much that I was just like, how are they using this to play football? But it was just like it was the speed of thought, the speed of mind yeah. and hands. They were getting so much out of it, but I just I couldn't get my hand around it all, yeah. at H all. Human like. chess, that's what they say. Right. Yeah. It's the whole like, the concept of jiu-jitsu is, you know, uh, you do one move and then I choose in that moment to do another move that's going to, you know, basically give me, get me into the better position. Yeah. And it's all about using, um, you know, it's not about... It's using someone's body weight against them, basically. Okay. So the, the concept of jiu-jitsu is that you could be, you know, 50 kilos and you could fight someone that's 90 kilos and you'll be able to win by using jiu-jitsu. Uh, did, no. did you look at me when you, she said 90 kilos? No. You did. No. You did. If you're, if you're listening, but I'm not if you're listening, and I was thinking, she looked at you I, for the 50 and then she thinking, gave me the 90 kg I was thinking, look. I would not fancy that, lads. Honestly, seriously. Well, listen, uh, it's different because, I mean, obviously w when you're training with people that are higher belt system than you or, you know, people that are training the same length of time as you, then that concept kind of goes out the window yeah. because you, you're both matched in, in, in a technical ability. But if somebody comes in and challenges you to a duel and has, has no jiu-jitsu or um, martial arts experience, then it can be tested, you know, <laughs> as I have tested many a night on a, on a pub. But, uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, okay, so moving on from, like, pub fights, yes. um, let's, let's zoom on to Madison Square Garden, yeah. a little bit of a bigger venue. So undisputed, Katie Taylor is now the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. She now has more belts than me, like, <laughs> yeah, overall. Um, but there was some controversy, controversy at the game, uh, at the match. Um, a few boxers had kind of come out and said, I don't think that was the correct decision. Mm -hmm. Now, some people had said daylight robbery, which I don't agree with. Such a tight score. I think it was 95, 96, 94, 96, 94. So it was a really, really yeah. close game. Yeah. Um, do you think that she should have won that match? I'm after watching it twice already and, I, and I'm going to go back and watch it a couple more times. I thought it was a draw, if I'm being honest. And then I watched it the second time and I could see, you know, it depends on what way you look at it. Um, she was more composed. She chose her shots a lot better um, than a person. Um, person was, was messy. She was off balanced, you know. Um, and I don't think Katie has faced someone like that before. So I think a lot of the, the people who are, you know, on Twitter and, and that are now boxing experts that have probably never boxed a day in their life or stood a foot inside a gym are saying, oh, she was robbed, she was this or she was that. She wasn't, she wasn't robbed. It was very, very close. Um, and look, she's called for, they've both called for a rematch. So we'll see how it goes. But I think people were just shocked that she's never faced anyone that, that was so heavy handed, that heavy handed before and that was in her face. Um, you know, she didn't back off at all. She didn't give her any space. She, uh, she squashed all of Katie's punches and, and all those um, combinations that Katie would have used prior, you know, jab, jab, slip, body head. She was landing them and they weren't really, it didn't seem to be doing that much damage on Persone, but. Because she, Persona, she's, she's not a professional boxer. She's a Belgian policewoman. Yeah. She's coming into this fight, 43 wins, one, one loss, loss. And yeah. I think she lost in like 2010. Something yeah. really impressive. And mm -hmm. I know when you look back and get in more detail, a lot of the fights were in Belgium and they weren't like massive big rounds. But it's still yeah. seriously impressive. I mean, when you, when you put together two champions like that, two women who are at the best of their game, you know, it's going to be close. It's, it was never going to be a situation where, you know, Katie was going to get a knockout or she was going to get a knockout. Now, obviously in combat sports, you know, it's anything can happen. Do you know what I mean? In any kind of sport, anything can happen. But um, I think anyone who knows anything about boxing knew that it was going to be tight going in there. And, you know, at the end of the day, she did win.
to the judges. I think you have to ride your luck sometimes as well. Like if you look back on it, like I watched it back a couple of times as well and I definitely thought she won the first kind of three, four rounds, definitely. Some of them in the middle were sort of patchy where I thought you could kind of start looking at it and see the fight sort of turning on its head. But I think once she came back into the end and she, her ability to absorb the punches and stay on her feet and stay in the fight, I think was very commendable because I think had there been a knockdown, all of a sudden you're looking at a totally different thing. I think if you look back even to Rio 2016, I thought Katie Taylor won that fight and I thought she was robbed of a bronze medal at that Agreed. time. So yeah. sometimes you don't get what you deserve in sport. But staying the course and doing what she's done in three years, I think she has deserved to come out on the right side of luck sometimes, you know. And sport, is just, boxing in particular, is always so open because judges' scorecards are often open mm -hmm. to such public criticism. But I do think that sometimes we have called it out rightly when it was wrong the other way around. I do think sometimes we need to go, look, maybe give her the benefit of the doubt. I thought it was a draw. But on the balance of things, I definitely thought she won the first half of the fight and she stayed composed for the mm -hmm. second half. So if you're going to look at things in a balance yeah. like that, I think give her the benefit of the doubt. I that would be my... Because she is like, she like she is technically the better boxer. And when you, when yeah. you hear other boxers speak about her, they talk about her foot speed and her just, mm. her, her speed in general um, and her technical ability. Yeah. And like, you can definitely see that. And then it was almost kind of like, Pearson's a heavy hitter and a solid puncher and like you said she's sloppy yeah. and it was almost like Katie was like well I can still beat you at your own game yeah. and it got into mm. a little mm. bit of a dogfight. Katie still landed more power punches than her as well. Pe you know, Pearson's like, face like, it looked like it, yeah. it looked like it as well I think it was just because she kept coming forward mm, yeah. it was nearly like, like if, now both were battered at the end of it mm -hmm. but serious blows were yeah. thrown by both fighters. I think a lot of times with Katie you know, she faces opposition that kind of respect her a little bit too much and they let her play her, or, or fight her own game, you know, but that definitely wasn't going to happen this weekend. And, and we saw that she went in, a person went in looking for, um, you know, a scrappy fight, a dog fight, as you say, and, you know, she got it. But I think, you know, a lot of people who would have, uh, you know, said anything about Katie would have said that she will lose to someone who does fight like that. And I think she proved everyone wrong, that she, she can go in there with someone who's got the same technical ability as her, or she can go in there with somebody who, you know, wants to fight. And I'd say she'll probably look back on that and go, maybe she should have been a little bit more disciplined in, in the, the shots that she was If she you was think throwing. about it though, right, go back to the gold medal that she won in London. Do you remember the girl that she fought there, Sofia Ochigava, the Russian? Same thing, real unorthodox, real scrappy, really in her face. And that was another fight that lots of people thought was 50-50. They're the fights Katie doesn't like. She yeah. doesn't like that rump, rough and tumble like when it gets really bad because she gets drag, dragged into a dog fight. And she is technically so proficient. Talk to any of the pros, talk to any of the coaches, and they will say she is the best in the world. So technically proficient, so brilliant. But when she gets dragged into a dog fight, she doesn't like that. So I thought she did extremely well to cope with that mm -hmm. as well in particular. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And you know as well, like, especially in boxing and MMA or any, any fight sports is that you, you've got the, the people at home watching who have an opinion, you've got the people who are there watching it in the audience, you've got the judges, you've got the ref and then you've got each other's corner. So everyone sees a different fight, you know. Um, so I, although you might not agree with the judges' decision, they gave her the win and look, the, the rematch will be really interesting, you know. And how do you think, like I, I've coming from like a fighter, how, how do you think Katie would, would feel like seeing this kind of this kind of stuff in the media of like oh it was closer or oh I think she knows that though Jenny I got a uh, sense even from her post match uh, interviews that see, she knew yeah you, and you know. I, I think she kind of was like I, I like that undisputed I'd say that she wants that rematch more than Pursun because she is in saying that do you think that rematch is going to happen I don't. No. I, and I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. And I'll tell you why. I've seen a little bit of social commentary about Katie's a good and virtuous person and Katie will want to do the right thing. That is absolutely true. And that is the Katie that we all know. But Brian Peters and Eddie Hearn are businessmen and they're going to realise that this is a cash cow they have right now. Mm -hmm. She is the undisputed champion of the world. She is the greatest boxer on the planet in a female sense. And they have got to get out there, push her out there, make a business of it. She's probably going to, you know, have a few fights here and there. She'll do another few in Madison Square Garden. She'll get on another few undercards out there. She might fight Amanda Serrano. She might fight Breakhouse. She might do one of those. I just think 
if you want a rematch with Kaylee Taylor, you got to get in line because Jessica McCaskill wanted a rematch. She didn't get it. She had to go up a division. She had to go to super lightweight to go. She's now the undisputed champion there, or sorry, she's the champion of the world there. Um, I just think there's a lot of people who want to have a go off Kaylee Taylor, and I'd be very surprised if they put all those belts on the line once more to try and bring yeah. her back into the ring. I just, I don't see it. Yeah, it'll be a while. You know, it, it definitely, as you say, Jackie, it, it won't be something that will happen in the immediate future. Um, but so something similar to an Anthony Joshua. Exactly. Tyson Fury, you yeah. know, they'll build that up and they'll this, that and the other thing, you know. And, and Persona is, she's good. Um, you know, obviously Katie is, is very um, relaxed when it comes to media. You'll never hear her saying anything bad about an opponent, you know what I mean? She's... We all know how she holds herself in this like fantastic life. But Pursuing, you know, has been dragging it in, you know, obviously before the, the fight she was saying about how she has a mental um she's a, a mental edge over Katie because obviously she it has a full time job and you know she's in this for purely passion. She was throwing digs at Katie about like the funding that she got for you know in the amateur sport and stuff like that. So the usual boxing yeah. fighting yeah, kind yeah, of like yeah, yeah, the little kind of build up. You know what I mean? So I'm sure there'll be a bit of back. Well, one sided um, that that we might see it going. But um, I mean, you could hear it in I think it was the ninth round, the end of the ninth round in the corner. Her corner saying to her like, you know, you're going to lose this. Come on, yeah. let's 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 pull it mm -hmm. put it together. So. You know, and, and then the tent round, I, I don't know if she won the tent round, so I think she knew it herself. Eddie Hearn came out afterwards and said that was a draw, you know. Um, and then I, I'm sure it must not be nice um, to read the, the media, you know, people like Cara Frampton saying that it was daylight robbery, do you know what I mean, and that she didn't win that fight and stuff, so. Yeah, I think that was a bit, like... I was She's like, not going to like no, that. Yeah, not going to like know, that. Especially not because he's been such a supporter of her in the lead, like, all her career, you know. Um, but then again, look, he's... he's He's entitled to his opinion and he's entitled to say what, what he saw on the night. Um, and again, we don't know how, you know, m maybe it, he like there was legs and tails added to the, the articles that are online or whatever. But, um, you know, I think the real winner is boxing, you know what I mean? And, and, and women's boxing as well. So um, I think, you know, obviously in the lead up to this, there was a lot of, online Twitter people, you know, saying, uh, oh, there was, there's not enough coverage, no one's doing this, you know, she's our greatest athlete, blah, blah. Maybe now, going forward, um, there'll be a little bit more eyes and, and positive, positive and Is she, there. in your opinion, is she Ireland's greatest athlete? 100%. Yeah. 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 Or is that Jackie? Yeah. I would not hear a debate about anybody else. Yeah. I mean, I'm only saying that because Jackie threatened me. Jackie's hand is on the table. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think <laughs> of all the famous sports people that this country has had, you know, from just world champions and Sonia O'Sullivan, John Tracy, Roy Keane, everything that he has done, there are phenomenal phenomenal athletes that this country has produced but just look at Katie Taylor's record five-time world champion six-time European champion Olympic gold medalist should have also had at least an Olympic bronze medal in Rio in my opinion and now within three years of turning pro is the undisputed champion of the world five belts including the ring belt it is unbelievable like genuinely I actually think sometimes I wake up and I'm like I'm so proud that she's one of ours because yeah. I think anybody who has come across Katie or, or has gotten to know her over the years, she is one of the most humble athletes you will come across as well. And I think Irish people are very good at that. They always stay, most of them, very true to themselves. And I think she has held herself incredibly well, given everything she has gone through on a personal level as well. And what she has achieved for Ireland, I actually think is just phenomenal. And for mm -hmm. me, she is Ireland's greatest ever athlete. She also started not only unbelievable football player, she started chasing that boxing dream when there was no gold to chase or yeah. there was no, it wasn't yeah. like, I can do this. She basically had to kind of break down the walls herself and, and make women's... She had to like, pretend to be a boy in the first place her, to fight. She used to tie know. her hair up in underneath. They used to put her, her, her head guard on her before she went out to the ring so no one would see that she's a girl. You know, like when, when you... you, when you here, like I'm getting chills now, even thinking about that. That as at that young, and to have and her dad as well, Pete. You know, to to have that faith in her to say, you know, I know that there's there's no blueprint set out for you right now, but I believe in you. And for her to you know to say this is what I want to do, and to be fearless at that age to go in and to fight boys. Do you know what I mean? Um, and to to fight to break down barriers and do it in a respectful, humble. Um, like you said, Jackie, never losing focus of what the real goal is. And she'd say true to herself, to her family, to boxing. 
from amateur to professional. And it depends on, you know, what makes Ireland's greatest athlete. And for me, all those boxes she ticks. I have to agree with you both there. She's pretty, pretty solid. Like I, I remember when we were, I was playing with P-Mount and she'd be kind of in and out a little bit um, training and stuff and it'd be, all the folks would be in boxing and I was coming up from Kildare, just like happy to be there. <laughs> And um, I think there was a match or something we were watching. It was a, oh yeah, it was a match, and I think she came on as a sub or something. I can't remember, and she was unbelievable. And I was like, "How good is she at boxing? Then, if this is her secondary, like I do this when I have spare time, yeah. like yeah, just but uh, and then would was... never, would never, would never." You'd kind of have to talk to Sue, one of her best mates, was like, oh, she, oh, she's at like a world European. Like, she'd be like, oh, I was just away training. Like, it wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. But even, I think anyone that ever played football with her always said, God, they really wish she'd chosen that because you'd love to see what she could have done. Yeah. But like, there was never even a debate in her head. It was just boxing, boxing, boxing. Loved playing football. But you could tell from such an early age. Look at some of the videos you'd have seen on social media, even when she was a kid, saying, my goal is to be an Olympic champion. And... She has never lost sight of that. And I just, I, I, I think it's amazing what she's done. I, really I think it's it. going to be exciting to see where we'll all mutually agree one of Ireland's, Ireland's greatest athletes. Yeah. And we're, we're alive to actually see, we're in the era of seeing where she's going. And it just happens to be a woman that's doing unbelievable And also, stuff. think about all the young girls who get to watch her live. Like when I was young, Sonia Sullivan was really the only proper visible role model who was on TV. And really that was because world championships at that point, you'd get them. Olympic Games were obviously always on TV. And athletics has always had a great way of putting men and women on the same pedestal. And you can kind of watch them both on the same thing. Whereas a lot of women's sport weren't really on TV. But you think if you're a 10 year old girl now and you're turning on your TV and all the things that you're seeing and all these amazing women, isn't it a great world to grow up in now for a little girl to see that? Even look on the wall behind you. And it's like a wall of stars here I just think like the world that they're going to grow up in is so different and, and I'm delighted mm -hmm. this because uh, what like I remember it was Sonia Sullivan was the, the the female athlete that I remember being on TV but I, I even knew when I was five six I was like I am no long distance runner <laughs> like it was it was definitely like I'll run down the fields but it'll have to be after a ball and even then yeah. the pace isn't that impressive yeah. yeah so yeah to have to have someone like Katie to have you know the Irish hockey team to have so much choice and be able to to pick players or fighters or whatever it is and like that's a goal and you can yeah. see a pathway that they've paved is yeah it's not it's not yeah. a it's not a bad time to be growing up and the yes. more variety we have as well amongst women in sport, the, the better it is for, for the young girls that are coming up because, you know, they, they see someone that they can relate to, you know what I mean? Or they see something in someone where they, they can say, like, that could be me. That's what you need. You need a spark, do you know what I mean? To spark young girls, to, to have that thing go, like, that could be me. Or, you know, um, if they can't, if you can't see someone on TV, you know, that's a playing in sports, then how can you, you achieve to, to, to be like them or to be better than them or to get into the sports, you know? Um, and that's, for me, that's why what I do is so important is that I didn't know that, that the world of, of combat sports, martial arts was going on in my local area. Do you know what I mean? So that's why it's so important for, you know, not only independent broadcasters, but national broadcasters to support sport, support women in sport, because not only is it like, you know, our, one of our greatest athletes that we're saying is, is a woman, but um, who knows who else is out there, you know what I mean? And Jackie, do you feel as like you're in a position where, as a, as a female sports broadcaster, in a position of power to be able to deliver that to the masses? Probably now. I think when I started, I'd probably been more cautious about being really vocal about it because when you're trying to break through, and it's a fairly male-dominated industry when I'm breaking through, which is whatever, 10, 12 years ago. So it's kind of a different landscape then than it is now. Um, you kind of have to just learn to go with it and kind of get get in there and I suppose I, I probably still predominantly report on more men's sport than I do women's sport but we are trying to change that balance a little bit and I think now there is a duty on all of us to try to get out there and be seen to support more women's sport because it's what we all play it's what we all love you just like to think that that's reflected a little bit more in what you see on tv what you read in your newspapers and I definitely it's not like I have an obligation it's just something that I want to do like I, I genuinely feel like I want to help the next generation of girls to see that there are positive role models out there that they can be Jenny Murphy you know because otherwise 
a whole other generation of young girls miss out on, on something that I think is genuinely viable for them there right now. I think they all have a chance to be professional athletes mm -hmm. if they want. I think they can be female sports broadcasters if they want. They can be anything. They can go and set up their own channel, you know. So I think it's a totally different landscape. And I, I, I like having um, a, a sort of set of eyes on that to be able to see that that's happening right in front of us. And like speaking of, uh, on that kind of same route, TG4 and RTE, TG Carr, TG4, <laughs> class. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be covering all the matches for uh, the FIFA Women's World Cup. That's br unbelievable. Like, I'm probably going to get not a tap of work done <laughs> and there's going to be some serious sweepstakes. But like, that's a huge change for something we've never seen anything like that before. Um, Something exciting? Oh, yeah. Listen, I think it's going to be great. I'm going to get to work on it, which is brilliant. I've obviously done the Men's World Cup, but I've never done a Women's World Cup. We've never had anything like this before. And I think the greatest thing is that every single game is live on Free to Air TV, either on TG Car or RTE. And it just means that people actually have the chance to just throw on their TV and there it is. And the matches are at 8 o'clock in the evening. They're all like, there's a couple of 2 o'clocks, 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock. But you're talking primetime TV. It's the same time as what the men's um, game would have been on because it's in France. They're only an hour ahead. They're nine o'clock in the evening kickoffs over there. And just like we were saying, you know, that chance to see it and then be able to, to be it um, is so real because not only is it free to air, but the football these days, like anyone who watched the Women's Champions League final will tell you, the standard of football these days is unbelievable. And we're going to get a spectacle and people are going to be able to see it. So I think it's hugely exciting. I can't wait for it to get going. I think it's as well, like you're saying, that ease that it's on, like you just, you throw on the telly in the background and you kind of have a look up and see unbelievable skill being displayed. It just so happens that a, a woman is playing it. I think yeah. more players, I think it was in the, the last World Cup of the X million that were watching, 48% of them had never watched women's soccer before. And there's suddenly a whole new host of fans. Do, do you guys have like a target of viewers that you would hopefully tune in to watch or it's just... To be honest, they're, because they've never done this before, the measurables aren't really there. They're sort of, I think, tentatively in their heads, they probably have an idea of what they think would be good. But I, we've seen that the appetite for women's sport is there. Like, I mean, even when we put your guys' matches on, people tune in and watch them, like, you know. So I think it'll be a good indicator of just how much the landscape has changed when we do see the viewing figures. And in fairness, RTE and TG Car are fairly open about it. They'll show you, they'll tell you how many people are watching. And then we'll be able to debate the figures afterwards and say, was there enough interest or not? I do genuinely think there is going to be this time around. I think the appetite is there. I think Ireland not being in it does take away from it a small bit. We are definitely getting closer to that. And I know you've had Louise on the show and, and um, Steph's been on the show. And I do think the calibre of player that we have in Ireland, we're definitely getting closer to it. So if they were in it, I think we'd have a much bigger audience. But I do still think it's going to perform incredibly well. And uh, what kind of faces are we gonna are we gonna see on the panel apart from apart from yours? Yeah, apart from mine. Yeah. yeah. Well, the aforementioned. Which is great. Yes. Yeah, thank great. you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, well, Louise Quinn and Stephanie Roach are both actually on it sure as well. They both do. Of them, you know. Anything, the you know? two of them will pop They'll up say anywhere, yeah, throw on the media, and off they go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any camera. <laughs> that's it. They'll be there. Um, but it's great. We'll have them. A couple of other Irish, Irish internationals. Megan Campbell is going to be there. Emma Byrne. Uh, Colin Bell, the Republic of Ireland women's manager. A couple of the lads are doing it as well because I do think it's important. To sort of have a bit of balance as well because we, we have started to introduce women on men's panels uh, talking about men's sport and so far we've gotten really good reaction to that which I think is absolutely the right thing. I think mm. you need to reflect what society looks like when you're turning on your telly. Um, so that probably needs to be flipped as well. So like Richie Sadlier and Kevin Doyle are, are also going to do it and obviously having Colin there makes a big difference too. Because I think it's important having their views as well. Like if you've got Richie Sadlier doing a Champions League final and then also doing a Women's World Cup, it shows people at home that RTE are treating it in the same way that they're treating the Men's World Cup. I think that's important for people to see as well. And, you know, they know how to analyse a football game. So I'd be interested to see what their thoughts are on, on what the standard is and just how good they think it is. Well, because I know from chatting to Louise that when she was doing some, some work with RTE on, um, she's working with Damien Duff. Yeah. She's, she's, totally now, fan she's girls now in. a big Damien yeah. Duff fan. <laughs> yeah, so it's like that kind of, um, yeah, 50-50 split nearly is, it's, it's nice to look at the TV and you look at the panel and you don't necessarily know offhand what game they're analysing first. It's like, it's a solid mixture, like it could be a men's or it could be a women's, yeah. which is... Yeah. Yeah. 
and I hopefully that's gonna. Well, I mean, look. The other thing is for a lot of the the Irish female athletes that have come in, they've never done that before. Mm. You know, so you just you can't just expect somebody to walk in off the street and throw up all this information in front of them and say, "Here, go for it." There, that's how you analyze a football game. And like they might know when they're sitting down everything there is to know about the game but it's a very different job to ask somebody to come in and pull out all these little clips and you've got 30 seconds to say this and if you don't get it right we're never going to use you again you know so like that's the reality of what the media game is now i think what we have learned to do is we've we've managed to normalize it a bit more that like you've done a fair bit of it um lots of other irish female rugby players have done it now we're trying to integrate more of the soccer players to do it and as we've seen with any of them that have worked like you know steph and louise both worked on the world cup last year and did a great job you know so i think people are starting to get used to seeing their faces and they know as well that they're not talking shit that they know that they can yeah. do it and that's the most important thing you know i think once yeah. you have like a oh they're clearly knowledgeable on what they're covering and yeah. like for yourself lydia do you um on your tv channel is yeah. there a solid mix or do you try and kind of, it's just like, he's fighting really well, we'll chat to him, she's fighting really well. Do you have a kind of a... Yeah, well, I mean, the main bulk of the coverage that I do is um, at events. So it would be a post-fight interview. So if you win, you get an interview. That's that's predominantly nice. how, how it works. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's so good. Talk to uh, winners. Yeah. No <laughs> losers on no this show. Losers. <laughs> Maybe if there's an emotional loser, I'll yeah. be like, I only good content. <laughs> yeah. Jump in here. <laughs> you know, which, and they, it's turned into great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Just squeeze them <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, right, I'm pinching them. Come on, I need the views. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and no, but the, the, the loser element obviously is very important as well because, you know, two people go into a fight and one of them ha it loses, you know what I mean? Um, but, um, yeah, like, I, I would cover, obviously, the, the winners in the fight, but then if I'm doing stuff like documentaries or we're doing some kind of, you know, unique piece um, on a particular event or something coming up and there's no... I, I try to get as many women on the show as possible, um, even if it means there's a, a fighter that's in the crowd at an event, I'll pull them in just to give an update on what they're doing. So I, I'm definitely conscious of it. Um, but I again, I don't feel like, you know, I'm obligated to do it. I want to do it because there's a massive uh, skill level out there between amateur MMA to professional MMA to, to boxing, jiu-jitsu, judo, karate, taekwondo. There's a whole host of um, women in, in combat sports that are, you know, doing phenomenal things and... Listen, it gets said to me a lot of the time, you know, where, you know, you know, certain events get covered on, on wherever it is in the media and, you know, uh, people say, oh, why don't they do this or why don't they do that? You know, I don't, I, I see the potential for, you know, women, obviously broadcasting, women in sports, the, the opportunity for great content, but... You know, obviously these, you know, national broadcasters have a reason for why they don't do it, but l like we're saying, this breakthrough now with RTE and TG Cahar, that's what we need to do, normalise it, get get it on and let people just turn on the TV when they go home from work and sit down and, and let it be on and, and let it become a normal thing and, and let it become a true representation of what, what's happening in the country at the moment. So if you were to like give the listeners that like this is the next big MMA event to keep your eye, your eye or ear open for what one would you be kind of well, directing? MMA is an interesting uh, sport in Ireland at the moment because obviously we're not regulated uh, by Sport Ireland. Um, so the events are a little bit few and far between. Um, there's a lot of amateur events that are happening. Um, a promotion obviously Cage Legacy um, is doing great things. Um, but Bellator, Bellator MMA is a, is a uh, American promotion. Um, they've recently bought out Bama, who are a European promotion. Um, so they're the guys who do the three arena events and they come twice a year. So the next uh, Bellator MMA event will be in September in the three arena. So if it's you know going to be your first show or you're interested in going to an MMA show, that probably will be the, the best one to, to go to because you're seeing the, the kind of rise of the new up and coming um, uh, sports stars. We might see the UFC back again, um, but obviously with Conor now, we, you know, we don't know if he's going to fight again, um, whether it'll be MMA and, and, and who knows, but um, it would be great to see them back over here, yeah. All right, well, so better go back to football before we move on to the next one. So for last, like, because it's such a huge event, because like, obviously you're speaking about three arena and that's such a huge thing to cover. Yeah. World Cup, the whole month, covering pretty much like between yourselves and TG Carter, any any nerves or like are you getting to fly over no. to cover such a, no, no nerves I'd just love cool that. casual no raging. no <laughs> raging no I'll be in studio um I will actually be in France 
on holidays for the final. So if I could get up to Leon, I might do that. But um, I'm pretty much studio bound for the month. Um, myself, Darren Maloney and Peter Collins will be anchoring all of it between us and then we'll kind of divvy up the matches. But um, I, I don't really get nervous about it anymore. It's, it's just... I guess every every day is different because you never know what's going to happen. You walk into the studio, you don't know if you're going to get a shit game, you don't know if you're going to get an amazing game, you don't know if you're going to get penalties, you know, you don't know if you're going to have like VAR has changed our lives when it comes to football now because say everyone's Salah like, is oh, delighted yeah, with that. well, I'd say he is. Um, and me as a Liverpool fan, Delira, but um, yeah, it's just look, every day is is such a challenge because you're you're walking into studio and you can prepare yourself for the pregame as much as you can for what's going to happen, but but like, you know yourself when you're an athlete, sure, you know, the whistle goes and anything happens. And it's the same inside in the studio. We're just roaring and shouting at them. You know, the gas thing is when you're watching with the pundits, right? And they're trying to make their analysis, which like, let's say for halftime, they want to do like two, three different bits. And they're like, oh, yeah, clip that. Yeah, clip that. Oh, that looks good. Clip that or whatever. And then the, the I'll get like the lads who are doing the analysis in my ear going, tell them to lose half of this. Like they're after clipping up half the match. Like, you know, we, we only have about 15 minutes at halftime and the lads want to show about 14 different incidents, you know, so um, that's the challenge when you're trying to get pundits to sort of stick to their times as well. Like us here, yapping, See, yapping away, I'm you know. I'm desperate. Yeah. Like, I, I, I got to do it once and um, I was getting guided by one of the my old teammates in Cantwell. She's like, okay, we were looking over stuff before the game and like, this could possibly pop up. And then absolute pro beside me being like, yeah, clip that, Sean. Yeah. Clip that, whatever. <laughs> and I was kind of like, oh. I, I had no clips yeah. at the end of it so I was like can I steal some of your clips so she had like 17 minutes of clips so yeah no I completely understand you see they were probably there saying Lynn half of that isn't going out anyway so I'll pass it over to Jenny there no bother like, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah no no she's definitely the, the, the stronger <laughs> waffler than me anyway so um, in terms of predictions a football fan yeah, yeah, I'm a Spurs fan, so I'm not happy with football okay. this weekend. Oh, right, so yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> Prime TV. Oh. Sick of him with gloves yeah, so there from actually, underneath we here. We have a loser here <laughs> on the panel. I know. There's, no yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no losers on this show. There's no losers. It's all about the participation. Yeah. So do you have, like, a prediction? Who's going to lift the trophy at the end? Both of you. Well, my oh, prediction, I have a couple, right? Um, I think, okay, I know th this is how it works. I have a couple you pick of five teams and then one of them is going to win. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do think the USA have been a, an absolutely dominant force in women's football for the last few years. And everything that's happening with them off the pitch with their lawsuit is only another motivation to stick it to them to say, listen, we're doing this on the pitch and we're going to win our battle off the pitch as well. And what they're doing is incredibly admirable, looking for equal pay. Um, so I think that's, they don't have a better motivation to win the World Cup. Than, than that um, and to go back to back would be pretty special for them I think France given that it's in France and the stadiums are all sold out the final is sold out the men are the defend are, are the current champions Lyon have just won the Champions League and that's the backbone of their team they've got a huge chance and my other fancy is England bronze medalist four years ago um, very very unlucky in a lot of ways and they're brilliant like I mean I know you've been over to a couple of games in England to the WSL and the standard of their league over there is unbelievable so they'd be my three picks but listen throw up the coin and see what happens like you know America for me I think they might do it as well same as Jackie was saying there's just so much in terms of like a team mentality I think that you know what's going on with them could maybe give them a little bit of the edge and a fantastic team as well um, I'd like to see the UK do it do you know what I mean? But uh, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. And uh, anyone I pick, any World Cup, it never comes through. Even when I, uh, you know, I, even if it's fighting, I'll say definitely going to win it. Yeah. I'm going to put a fibre on that. Sweepstakes are great crack though. you got to oh, do yeah. one of them in the yeah. office. That's the I one got thing. Peru in the men's. Yeah. No, that was... <laughs> Do one in the women's. I oh, no, we fine. are. That's like, it's it's already like, I've that's eyed up how, a few. But that's how you get people in it. Like, if you're looking for a way to just give people a soft introduction to what they're going to see, what better way than do a sweepstake in your office? Yeah. Tell people, throw in a two euro, off you go. Whoever wins buys pints for the whole office and everyone has a great night out. That's yeah. what happens at a wedding, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. you yeah. throw in the fiver and then all of a sudden you realise that you're actually the loser. <laughs> 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 nice. Um, I'm gonna. I'm like. I was. I was thinking about the states before, and I. I was like, oh no, I think they're gonna win. And then I was looking at more of their stats. And I was chatting to Kleena Foley, um, a journalist, about it, and she was like, she's like an encyclopedic knowledge yeah. of women's sports. Oh yeah. And like, so they're the oldest team 
um, in the tournament, which isn't, I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah. I think as the women's rugby team, we've been sitting there before with some of the geriatrics. <laughs> the smell of where there's original off you on the <laughs> is unbelievable. Um, oh God, I hope she doesn't listen to Oh, she's that. definitely going to hear you for that. <laughs> she's going to be scented even if she oh, doesn't. To be fair, I've said worse and she knows it. Like, yeah. um, I think I've witnessed you saying it. Yeah, it's grand. Um, I, like, I think Australia could do, could do a little bit of a number. Yeah. It seemed like really good. And then... My the the game that I'm probably looking forward to the most in the first is England Scotland. You've got oh, yeah. you've got a lot of like Arsenal players. Kim Little is captain of Arsenal, unbelievable. So she had like a, a ACL injury at the start and chatting to some of the girls. Just rehab city. She was known as nine to five wow. by some of the men's players. Didn't know her name, but she was in the gym nine, nine to five. Just wow. like captain, fantastic. So but if you think about Scotland as well, right? Like, they played their going away game in Hampden Park. 18,000 people went yeah. there. I mean, that's off the charts. Imagine if we got that here in Ireland. Yeah. Believe. Now, we've been doing very well with them, maybe around 5,000, same with the rugby, around 6,000, which is very good. 18,000 people in Hampden Park for a going away game is unbelievable. And they got fantastic. an absolute cracker of a goal from Aaron Cuthbert. Unbelievable. A screamer. Awesome. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. it, was, it was class. And, like... I would, I always kind of judge us by other people who are like of similar sort of populations, similar sort of structures in place. And you look at Scotland and what they're doing. We're not there that far away from them. I think we're quite comparable. So I'd be very interested to see how they get on the World Cup yeah. because if they were to have a good World Cup, all of a sudden you're looking at Ireland saying right now, we need Why? to get going. Where, yeah. we, we need to make something happen here, you know. And just in regards, like if England do the job, like I've been kind of thinking about if, if England do get the win, I think it will change women's I think because you're like the states and so far away but like we were chatting about it and looking at some of their games they've not scored actually a lot of goals in the lead up to the campaign England have scored some belters mm. you've got France that again you've mentioned it's pretty much a Leon team um, and, and players that like you've got Lucy Bronze I'm just thinking of like some unbelievable players but then you've got the lesser known players and the smaller teams um, remember there's a girl I'm going to absolutely butcher her name now Gael I have it written down here Gael and Ganamont, so she's a Cameroon player, and she, I've, when one of the girls was playing over in Sweden with Eskis Tuna, there was this striker, and she holds the record for scoring the quickest goal in a women's like com highly competitive match. She scored it after two seconds. Did she score from the kickoff? Scored from kickoff. Yeah, and against a solid team, she was playing in Serbia. Um, and Must then have been a very solid goalkeeper. Uh, Jesus, what was she doing? She, the goalkeeper wasn't even that far off the line. Like I looked at the video, and it was like it wasn't even like it was a pretty decent like shot. Wow. But so this girl, she came to the Damas Venken, the the Swedish Premiership in the, her second season top um, score I think she's got 18 goals and she got signed to a, chi a Chinese team or no signed to another the top Swedish team Rosengard then went to China then went to Norway and is now back in Spain so she did an ACL and never got to play any games with China but there's like she'd be the one she's always got outrageous hair like it's brilliant I could see why you'd be a fan yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you no, it's, it's like a great big blonde wave wow anyway so she'd be like if you're putting on any outside bets, she's one to watch. She's yeah. one to watch for me anyway. Interesting. Like, that's my little bit of soccer punditry There's there. There's some yeah. cool ones as well. Like, I mean, Marta, the Brazilian forward, I don't know if anybody's watched her, yeah. but she's going to her fifth World Cup, which is pretty outrageous. That's a 20 yeah. year span. Like, seriously, you know, give me another athlete who can do something like that. I mean, I think Brian O'Driscoll might have done four Lions tours, did he maybe, you know, and you're looking at uh, like a, a, a scope of a player's ability to stay at the top level. I think she broke onto that Brazil team when she was like 16 or 17. So to be going to a fifth World Cup is pretty spectacular as well, yeah. you know. There's um, Fia Famuseli. She's the, she, she's, now retired, she played her last game at the weekend. So she was the New Zealand um, Black Ferns captain. She played in five World Cups, wow. won four of them. Unbelievable. And um, played with the Barbarians there at the weekend. And they didn't have, they didn't, were at the wrong side of a result. I think they lost to Twickenham, in Twickenham against England, 40 to 14. But it was, it was unbelievable that that's now becoming the norm. There was like 17,000 people there. Now I know in Twickenham it was, looks quite empty and it took a while for the crowd to get to 17 uh, 17,000 but like there's another athlete that she's she was went professional for a little bit That's and like amazing. there's some unbelievable yeah. athletes there it was great we got to see some of the Irish girls yeah. where the Babas again so we yeah. Malloy Sene and Hannah Chopper so there was yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah some some good results yeah, that'd be like great. that'd be one of the goals I'd love to ah you'll love. definitely get that one we'll see how the knee goes yeah
Get yourself Slow fit. Out. Get back yeah. out there. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, moving on from talking about myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice, swift. nice swift change. See that segue? <laughs> yeah. Class. You can give me some, give me some tips on that. Um, okay, so we've called it, but is there any, before we go, uh, dark horse, dark horse for the FIFA and uh, for the World Cup before we move on? Dark horse. I do not excel at this game. <laughs> I'm going to say Norway. Norway. All right. Oh, they're in like a tough... Norway are in a tough group. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why they're a dark horse. <laughs> <laughs> but if you watch them... Excellent I mean, point, listen, Jackie. They yeah, play, let, me, um, let me just refresh. They play great football. Yeah. You know, uh, and obviously they don't have Ada Hegeberg, which is a, a big blow, or her sister. Do you but think that's a big blow? I do, actually, yeah. Because <coughs> I think in a World Cup... If you're going to look for people who can score goals, I think she's got like 255 goals in 254 games. I mean, give me another person who's scoring those kind of records. It's off the charts. Um, so I think going to a World Cup without somebody like that, and listen, this is not a new problem. They've been dealing without her for a couple of years, but I just, I would have tried to move heaven and earth to get her onto that World Cup squad because I just think going into a major tournament without the, the world's best player is something that you should try to avoid yeah that's solid managerial <laughs> advice Jackie yeah. so okay last what are the viewers going to expect from this World Cup biggest one yet biggest one yet huge worldwide audience amazing goals and whatever happens we are going to get a magnificent story if England can pull this one off it will probably be one of the greatest results in women's sport because it will change the landscape because if you look at the wave of positivity that be, that's behind the England men's team at the moment the, the quality of the league the women's league the WSL and just how well it's doing there's people from America want to come and play there now I think if they could go and win the World Cup it would change the whole landscape like, like that as I said earlier if America can win it's going to change the whole game if Title IX changed the way women's sport was seen back in the 70s in America. This is going to change this for the next generation of girls because if they are World Cup winners and they go in and they, when they win their court case, whole new ball game, whole mm. new ball game. Yeah, that was it. Absolutely. That was a pretty solid. Okay. Where can I go? Like, yeah, yeah. like, Jackie wins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she explained the term dark horse to me as well. Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah. Norway, got it, yeah. thanks. Okay, we'll move on from some football to a bit of tennis. Uh, Serena Williams knocked out in the third round of the French Open. Um, yeah. Wearing some fashionable stuff as well. I actually thought it looked pretty cool. So do I. They, oh, they really always cool. write up about what she's wearing and I'm just like, I don't, I don't care if she comes out in a bleeding bin bag. Do you know what I mean? Like She kind of did though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I wouldn't be able to pull it off, per I se. I would not yeah. pull that off. Lads, I wouldn't wear that into the shower. Like, <laughs> seriously. Like, I mean, in fairness, Serena is her own woman and she can do anything yeah. she wants. But I think she kind of likes that as she well. She loves the controversy. You know, yeah. She does, because like, she wouldn't she be wearing it otherwise. Purpose. Yeah, she like, wouldn't wear it otherwise, you know what I mean? And listen, with Nike, the whole campaign, be fearless, be brave, you know, it just... There's obviously months of marketing that go into what she wears and, and picking out and stuff like that. So, look, if she complains about it, like, don't don't focus on what I'm wearing, you know, focus on the tennis and what I've achieved and stuff. But if you want them to... Do, she's smart. She knows how media works. If you want to do that, then, you know, wear something, I don't want to say normal, but something that's not going to get you uh, headlines, you know. But Yeah, I'm just kind of... I'm like a phenomenal player, but I think sometimes people get surprised when she loses and it's yeah, kind of like... Yeah. But like, I mean, it's she she hasn't got past the third round. I think it's the first time in like five years that hasn't happened. But so she, it is yeah. a big surprise. But like, if you, everything that she's... She hasn't hardly been training. She's hardly been playing. Like, you can't just expect to turn it on when you and want to. And it's so to. funny because the she... The, she the does, into, Yeah, that's yeah. it. And like, plot it's too. She spoke about her opponent, Sophia uh, Kennan, and she was like... The, the balls that she was hitting were inch perfect yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was playing against I was outmatched and she didn't say outmatched it was very short direct answers and then swiftly move along but yeah. but she clearly thinks it's a tap and I can turn it on when I want yeah. and I can have a baby I can be injured I can come back I mean she is a superstar yeah. like let's call it and she's page. done that though yeah. to be fair like it's a, in like not it's not been a tap that's been constantly free flowing but she's done all those things and st still been able to be like Yep, yeah, back in the groove, and then mm. obviously a couple of knocks or whatever it is, and suddenly it's a little bit shaky. But like she's still an absolutely phenomenal player. I think she's yeah. to... She is treated kind of differently than any other female sports player I know, though, because like 
if John McEnroe is angry and throws a tennis racket, everyone's like, oh, there's McEnroe. He's having a bit of a, you know, whinge or whatever. If Serena Williams does it, she's a drama queen. She's a mm. diva. She's a psycho. And I do kind of think sometimes the language around her is a little bit misleading because at the end of the day, she's just lost a match in a major tournament. Mm. She's going to be pissed off. So, you know, I think... Sometimes, like if you're doing it, and I've been there <laughs> doing post-match interviews with athletes who do not want to talk to you, and all it takes is one question for them to lose their shit and go yeah. crazy at you. So there is a line there sometimes when I feel like Serena crosses it, but it's probably she feels like she's been provoked. And I've been on the other end of that, and sometimes you kind of have to have... you. In, in a way, you try to have a bit of empathy for them and you try to say, look, I'll, let's put myself in their shoes and say, look, we've all been there on a bad day when you don't want somebody shoving a microphone in your face. Mm -hmm. But equally, you know, I think Serena is treated somewhat differently than a lot of other people, I think, anyway. Well, I think, because well, well, I've been in that position where I've, I've had an absolute mare of a game and we've lost and then... Then it's been up. it's been the Hunger Games <laughs> and like congratulations you volunteered to yeah. be the one in front of camera yeah. and you're like I can't I'm an ugly crier it's yeah. clear I've just cried but the thing is I just don't think that you know especially the viewers don't understand and a lot of broadcasts a lot of journalists as well if they've never experienced what it's like to be in a fight camp or training camp to 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 train as hard as a professional athlete does and you've trained so hard, so consistently, you've been broken down, you've, 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 you've fought or you played in the best of your capability and then you lose. And in that moment, you know, you have someone with a microphone in your face and, and have, you know, they provoke you in the way that they do with her. They, you know, they, the last press conference I, I watched with Serena, they, uh, the uh, reporter was saying like, um, it's really famous now because obviously it was such a big deal, but he was saying like, oh, you're not smiling. You're sitting there, you look so annoyed and you've just won and, and why aren't you, a little, you know, why aren't you show, showbiz? Like, why aren't you, you know, tap dancing for us? And she's like, you know, it's like nearly midnight. So I want to go home. I want, I'm tired. I want to, people don't uh, realise that, you know, how hard the athletes work. Do you know what I, mean? I, I think you can have a. I think there, there. It, it, it depends, obviously, on the journalist. Like I think there's people that have interviewed me, and they've definitely had a lot of empathy, and that makes it so much easier on the athlete because then suddenly you're not defenses or your wall is built up, and you yeah. and you just don't want to give anything away. And at least if you know, like, they're doing their job, and. And I like. I think you. I think as an athlete, I think we, there's like a. It's a two way thing. Like it's. Yeah. People at home want to know a little bit more information and they're trying to get it to them. And, and sometimes maybe the questions are a little bit awkward or there's a blubbering mess in front of the camera. Yeah. Uh, and then oh, I think I think the blubber mess is good though. Do you well, know what I mean? Well, not if you're the blubber mess. Yes. If you are, exactly. no, yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's oh, it, horrible. But yeah. do you not think that you know that there will be somebody watching at home that that has experienced some kind of loss in some format, whether it be like their day job or you know whatever it is, and that they see you in that vulnerable space and they can relate to it or they can you know get up and go, okay, I'm not the only one that's in this position. And yeah, but at, at, the, at, the, when it's at that you, yeah, but at the time you don't you've just lost. I've just blown a Six Nations game that could cost it and you're not thinking about the people oh, Mary because yeah. you're, you're, you're like for those 80 minutes it's it's everyone beside you wearing the same colours as you going for this one goal and then suddenly pff, it's gone and then someone wants to ask you a question you don't well for me anyway you're so wrecked from it that you can't you don't think about outside things it's just like how I'm feeling how the girls are feeling and it's just kind of can all come out like it's yeah some like tactics wise how do you manage like coming off going from such a high of competing and then it not going your way on the day do you have a an approach or is it just dependent on the athlete but you see i've been in situations where i have actually i probably shouldn't say this because my bosses would go bananas but um I, at the 2012 olympics i turned off the camera and like there was an athlete crying and her her day had not gone according to plan. She had gone to London with great hopes, and it hadn't gone well for her. And um, the I mean, in in one way, people at home, you know, that raw emotion, the tears, like it's great TV. 
but like I know I know this girl for a long time and I've gotten to know her she's a friend of mine now but like I had followed her and her career and I'd, I'd spent a lot of time with her and I felt like it was my responsibility to make sure that the first time people at home saw her that she was able to conduct herself and say look this didn't happen her whole family had travelled over to watch her compete that day and the last thing that they need is to see her being a blubbering mess on TV so there is a responsibility sometimes where you have to take and go okay this might be great TV but like this but is not only, what she needs. It's only great TV. It's like 30 it's not, seconds. Yeah. It's 30 seconds of her life that she'll be remembered for forever or a moment of mine, of clarity that just goes, here, listen, let's just give it a minute. But and actually, you, but, by giving it a minute, she was much more composed. She gave me a much better interview. And with the benefit of sort of having a few minutes, she realised that, look, you know, th th there's a reason why it didn't happen. Yeah. You know. But then looking at it, if you're in that for for saving you for those 30 seconds there is a trust there being like she's not gonna do me over and I'm mm. not gonna get screwed so if Jackie asked me for an interview next time instead of being like you're definitely more open to that as well I think it's a yeah it's a two-way street yeah it's a safe yeah. space isn't it where you know that you can you can but then answer, you know? the other side of it like there'd be colleagues of mine and, and other people who would disagree with me like they would say like sure you know, get the interview, get out of there, you know. So I think, and maybe it's because, like, I played sport at a reasonably high level that I actually kind of feel like I, I wouldn't say I've been there. That that would be totally disingenuous. I, I wouldn't say that. You can, but you like, can definitely but I can empathize. Appreciate and, it yeah. and I can empathize. And I think I just, I wouldn't like to be in their shoes and not have somebody looking after me. That's that's the biggest thing. But like, look, I mean, I've had plenty of other people who'd say, like, all you have to do is put the microphone out there and say, why didn't you run faster? Because that's actually pretty much the reality oh of God. sometimes. And they don't mean it in that yeah. way. But like really effectively, if you lose a match or you don't kick the ball fast enough, you're, you know, your team loses. You know, there are questions. Why yeah. didn't you do this better? You know, so um, there are people who will always disagree with the method. But I, I would always kind of stick to my principles and just be like, look, you know, these are people too, like, you know. So, like, is that, you're going to steal some of those tactics for... Absolutely, kind of, yeah. yeah. I'm going to call Jackie every time I go to work now. I'll be like, <laughs> okay, Jackie, prep yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, why did you get punched in the head yeah. more times than the other? Why didn't you move your why head? Did, why did you not move your head? Yeah. Um, but that's that's why you're so respected, though, do you know what I mean? And that's obviously because of, you know, that you come from a background where you've experienced this, do you know what I mean? So you're able to properly report and, and the people that you're you're interviewing respect that, you know what I mean? That's why it's so important. So... Going back to tennis because we veered wildly off. Not Do you think Serena Williams is going to bounce back from? I do. I think of all people, if somebody's going to bounce back, Serena is the woman. I mean, like, look, she's one of the greatest athletes in the world, so she can definitely bounce back. And what will she be wearing when she bounces back? Well, in Wimbledon, they'll make her wear white, oh, so yes. she can't wear what she wants. So um, I, I think one way or another, you'll definitely see her back um, in a couple of weeks and see what she'll be like. But um, she was a shadow of herself these yeah. weeks, you have to say. You know? Well, it was a bit that the, the controversy in the dressing rooms as well. She she got knocked out so early, she kicked a male tennis player, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, we kind of covered a little bit of that anyway, so let's just move she's along. Earned, I think she's earned her dues, though, as well, to be able to say, look, I want to get out of here, you know? Yeah, big time. Whatever. Serena, big one, time. One of these Serena days, yeah. one of these days, I'll be like, Neve, more water, please. Yeah. <laughs> I think that day is coming very soon, Jenny. Oh, <laughs> man, well, my ego is bigger than my fro, so do you know yourself? <laughs> um, right, we've, we've chatted a lot of sports. Um, we're going we're gonna to sum up, but first we're going to get to, we're going to wrap up but before we go, we have this um, every week. It's Word of the Week. Oh, great. I love so, this. So, yeah, a bit of com competition. Wouldn't be like you to like it, Jackie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, at the moment, Mac Macros is pretty crap at this game. Yeah, no, I've, I, I feel like I should have the obligatory Mia Hamm guest just because she she's not here. She's as bad as me. I'm oh, terrible at this game. She's terrible. She chucks out <laughs> Mia Hamm and then if there's a vague kind of hint that like you use an accessory, Serena Williams gets bolted out there. So don't worry, we'll... We'll get down to business. <clears throat> Best of luck. <laughs> oh man, this is a lot more respect than is normally. Okay, fine. Okay, <clears throat> clear my throat just to add a little bit of tension. That's what happens when a champion is in against another champion. It's the best versus the best. Kate Daly. Yeah. Sure, listen. <laughs> like, 
was the easiest I knew words that was of the week be too ever. Easy. Oh, pa- I think I just said that oh, 15 minutes fe- ago. I know, and I was like, that sounds remarkably like. Yeah. Oh, listen, can we all just take a moment to blame the producer, yeah. Neve? Well, can I just say, I was listening the week that Stephanie Roach was on, and the quote was her quote, and she didn't know it. <laughs> so, listen, this that's not the worst you've had okay, on this show. Okay, it's not the worst, but thanks for pointing out that we've had worse. Yeah. <laughs> Sound. So, yeah, we've got like some solid, yeah. Solid wallets there. Thanks, Jackie. Yeah. Thanks, Lydia. Uh, great. Well, like, that was pretty brief. I should probably wrap up then. <sighs> great. Well, that's all we've well, time for. Well, I could get me a ham if you want. No, you've already yeah. done that. Serena Williams. <laughs> oh, so there's lots to look forward to in this coming week. We've got the hockey. Hockey up in Banbridge. We spoke about the Women's World Cup. Um, there, we're going to link um, on the website. So it's there's a 20 by 20 event calendar if anyone else wants Great to idea, check it. So Three good. Guys, there's yeah. so many events on and I'm not good at Google enough to like figure it all out. It's all there in one page for the lazy. Yeah. So yeah, Brilliant. get clicking on the link because there's a heap of sport. Um, yeah, guys, Jackie, Lydia, thanks so much for, thanks, for coming. That was great. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Great. And uh, you're really good at words of the week. <laughs> Great. Uh, Yeah, we'll chat to you next week. Thanks for listening, guys.